Every summer, the Dollar Tree brings out a variety of coastal and beach-inspired home decor, perfect for DIYing and crafting. Hey everyone, thanks for coming to hang out with me again today. If you're new here, my name's Jess. I'm really excited to share these projects with you. I hope you're excited too. Let's get started. I wanted to create a wreath for my front door that has a coastal theme to it. I picked up one of these wooden wreath forms from the Dollar Tree, some of the nautical rope, and I have some of this macrame cord that I get from Amazon. It comes in a really big spool. I'll make sure that it's linked in the description box below. I started by cutting my macrame cord down to eight inch pieces. I found it easier to start with a 16 inch piece, fold it in half, and then cut it down to the eight inch length. Once I had a pretty big pile of those eight inch pieces cut, I started by taking one of them, folding it in half, pulling the loop through the center of the wreath base, and then pulling the ends through that loop. That creates a slip knot around the wreath base, and I just continued doing that until I had the entire wooden ring full of the slip knots of the macrame cord. As I continued filling up the wreath form with the knots, I just made sure that every time I added a new piece of cord, I went in from the same side so that all of the knot side of the two strings would be on the same side, if that makes any sense. I wanted to make sure that the indentation side of the knots was always facing upward towards me. After the wooden ring was completely filled with the knots, then I went in through with that nautical rope. This is the blue and white twisted nautical rope. They do sell regular jute colored nautical rope at the Dollar Tree too, but I like this one because it fits in with that coastal theme. And I just ran a bead of hot glue along the indentation side of those knots and I covered that little space up with the rope. I think this wreath looks good as is with just the rope around the center, but I wanted to add a few embellishments to mine. I grabbed a few picks of greenery, a few pieces of ribbon, and some seashells. Most of these things I got from the Dollar Tree. I wanted to keep mine a little simple, so I kept most of the decorations towards the bottom of my wreath, but this is where you could let your style kind of come into play, and you could add shells the whole way around, or add different types of bows or greenery. Whatever you like, this is the perfect base to decorate with. When I saw this three paneled sign at the Dollar Tree, I knew I wanted to create a piece of coastal decor with it. So I grabbed a few of the larger seashells that come in packs at the Dollar Tree, one of these fishing net decor, and of course a bag of seashells that you can also get at the Dollar Tree. I liked the wood tone of this, but I wanted it to have more of a weathered look. So I went in with some white chalk paint and a big chalk brush, and I just dry brushed over all three panels of the sign and I focused more of the paint on the edges and I left the paint a little bit more see-through going through the middle. The fishing net decor that you can get is pretty large. It's a pretty big piece of net and I didn't need all of it. I just wanted a few pieces draped over each of the panels of the sign. So I stretched it out a little bit and then I would drape it over one corner or the other corner of each panel. And once I had a piece how I liked it, I would stretch it out so that you could see the knots in between all of the strings. And I would just add a few dabs of hot glue here and there to hold it in place. Once all of my netting was in place, I took two of the starfish ornaments and one of the sand dollar ornaments and I laid it out in the center of each panel. Now the starfish are a little tricky because they're a little crooked so you have to make sure that you're only putting glue on the prongs of the starfish that are actually going to be touching the panel but otherwise it glued on pretty easy. After I had each element in the center of the panels then I went back through with my little bag of seashells. I picked out some cute ones and I added it to different areas of each panel. This is also where you could get creative. If you didn't want to add seashells you could put little bows or some little pieces of greenery. You can decorate this however you like. And another thing I like the wood color of the these panels but if you wanted more color for your decor you could paint them with a really pretty blue or a green or even just paint the whole thing white. I'm always 
always looking for more storage in my house and reusing cardboard boxes is a great way to do that. I took one cardboard box, some of this white nautical rope from the Dollar Tree, and I actually found this piece of fabric at Joanne Fabrics. It was on the remnant cart and I really liked the coastal print on it. I started by taking my box flaps and hot gluing them to the inside of the box. I used some clips to hold them into place while the glue set. I like doing it this way because I feel like it gives more sturdiness to the sides of the box. After I had the two longer sides of the box glued into place, before I glued the shorter sides inward, I just cut a small triangle off of each side so that when I folded the side flap in, there it wasn't rubbing up against the other flaps and it took some of that bulk out. I can't really give you any kind of measurements for the material because it's all going to be based on how big your box is. For my box, I laid my box on top of my material and I made sure that when I folded the material up over all four sides, it completely covered all of the inside of the box and went down into the bottom of the box. I wasn't worried about some of the bottom showing through because I am going to create another panel to slip down inside. I just wanted to make sure that all of my sides would be covered with material. When I added my hot glue, I made sure that I was only adding hot glue on the inside of the box. This is pretty thick material, but I was still afraid that some of the glue would ooze out through and you would be able to see it from the outside. So I just made sure that all of my hot glue stayed towards the inside. Once I had my two longest sides glued into place, I started working on the shorter sides and and as I was folding the material up, I would kind of pinch it with my hands where there would be some excess so that I could cut it away and it wouldn't be so bulky once I folded it up. After I had some of the excess cut away, then I could just pleat the material as neat as I could and fold it up over the edges and then hot glue it into place. Because you could still see some of that cardboard through the bottom of the box, I wanted to create another panel that I could just slip down inside. I cut a piece of chipboard down to fit inside of my box and I took another piece of that material and I just covered one side of the chipboard with the material. I did the same thing where I would glue both of the longer sides in. I would cut out a little bit of excess material just to make sure there was no bulk in there before I folded the shorter sides towards the middle of the chipboard. Once the whole panel was covered in that material, then I could just slide it right into the bottom of my box and you didn't see any more cardboard. I wanted to keep the decorations on this box pretty simple because it does have a pretty busy print. I started with two lengths of the nautical rope that I folded in half and I laid one piece of rope out so that the loop was facing to the right. I took the other length of rope and I pulled the two ends through the loop and then once the loop was almost the whole way through I pulled the ends of the left loop through the second loop. I know that seems a little complicated. I'm going to do it a second time so you can watch it again, but it's pretty easy and it creates a pretty simple knot. Of course, you don't have to do this knot at all. You could just create a regular bow with the rope and I think that would look cute too. Once I had my knot tied, then I took the longer side of the box and I hot glued the knot into place first. I went around all of the edges and I just added hot glue on the corners because I didn't want to run the risk of any of the hot glue seeping through the rope and you being able to see it through the ropes. So I would just add a little bit on the corners as I was going around and pulling it tight. Once I got to the back side, I cut the excess length of rope off and I added some hot glue and pinched the ends together. I knew that I would keep this box where you wouldn't see those unfinished ed edges, but if that's something that bother you, you could always cover that up with another piece of decoration. I get asked what I do with all of the projects I make and a lot of times I like to reuse them. I have this lantern that I made in a previous video. I'll make sure that I have that video linked in the description box for you and I'm also using this decorative jar from the Dollar Tree and some seashells. The lantern was pretty easy to make. I just used two, I think they were six by eight canvases from the Dollar Tree. I cut off the canvas material and then I added craft sticks to the side. 
For the decorative jar, I really liked the diamond pattern on it. I wanted it to have a little bit more of a coastal feel, so I mixed together three colors of paint to create a really soft blue-gray color. I added a coat of the paint to the jar. Once it was all dried, then I went back through with my sanding block and I sanded off the paint in different spots so that you could see that diamond pattern a little bit better. For the front of my jar, I wanted to create a tassel using some jute cord. I laid a piece of the cord over my sanding block and then I wrapped it in the opposite direction about 15 or 20 times until I felt like there was enough around there to create a nice thick tassel. I tied the two ends of that first piece that I had laid down to create a knot at the top of my tassel and then I cut the ends in the middle on the opposite side of my sanding block. To finish off my tassel, I took another piece of the jute cord and I tied it around the tassel about an inch from that top knot and I hot glued the ends of that jute cord into place. And then the last step for my tassel was just to gather all of the ends up in between my fingers and make sure that they were all cut to an even length. Before adding the tassel to my jar, I'm just using some hot glue and the same jute cord and I wrapped it around the neck of the jar about three or four times just to create a band. Because this jar was a little bit short, I didn't want to tie the tassel around it and risk having it hang down lower than the jar. So I just added hot glue to that rope band that I had created and glued two of the ends of the tassel to the rope band. Once that was dry, then I dug around in my bag of seashells and I picked out a few that I really liked, some that had some brighter colors on it, and I hot glued those around the tassel as well. So the great thing about this lantern that I created, originally I had created it because I wanted it to fit in with some of my farmhouse decor, but now that I'm switching over to coastal for the summer, it goes perfectly with this coastal jar that I created. I just added in a few pieces of wheatgrass or pap pampas grass. I'm not even sure what these are called, but they just have that easy breezy look that I wanted in my beachy decor. I had this idea in my head that I wanted to create an over the door hanger with the beach feel. I grabbed one of the over the door hangers from the Dollar Tree along with this long plank sign. This wooden sign from the Dollar Tree already has the grooves in it to make it look like three separate planks, which I love, but you could use one of the solid signs too. Now, because this sign already had two holes on one end, I decided to create two more holes on the other end using my crocodile. This is a really cool tool. I use it a lot in my craft room for punching through these Dollar Tree signs. It works good on chipboard, cardboard. I've even punched through bottle caps with it before, so I'll make sure I have this linked in the description box below for you if you're interested in it. Next I got to work painting my sign. I'm using some white chalk paint here with a chalk brush and I'm doing a heavy dry brushing over the whole sign concentrating more of the paint on the edges but I didn't want to see a whole lot of that wood color through so I am doing it pretty heavy through the center as well. Now while I'm painting this I'm going to be real honest with you and this project did not turn out how I expected it to but I wanted to leave it in here and explain to you what happened, what went wrong, what I didn't think through in the first place and how I had to change it to make it work because sometimes I know people can get frustrated when they're crafting that things aren't always turning out but there's almost always a way to fix whatever you're working on so a little bit later in the project you'll see where things kind of went wrong with this project and what I did to fix it. Once my paint was dry, then I wanted to attach my over the door hanger to my sign. And this is where things went wrong, but I didn't realize it at first. So I started by using a combination of the E6000 glue and some hot glue to make sure that my over the door hanger would hanger would stick to my sign. I would have that long-term hold of the E6000 and the short-term hold of the hot glue. And some of you probably already can see why this project didn't work out because the over the door hanger the over the door part is not at the top of my sign it's in the middle of my sign so after I had this entire thing finished and I hung it on the door to take a picture of it the the sign part of it the plank part hung up over the top of my door so I could not close my door <laughs> 
<laughs> with the sign where it was on this hanger. But like I said, I ended up fixing it in the end so that I could use this as a decorative hanger somewhere else in my house. And I'll get into that a little bit later and explain how I fixed all of that. Back on the front side of my hanger, I'm using two packs of those starfish that you can find at the Dollar Tree and I'm hot gluing one above each of the hooks. I had to stagger these out a little bit so that they would all fit, which I thought actually gave the hanger a little more character and made it look really cute. So I would hot glue one of the starfish down lower on the sign and then I would hot glue the second one up a little bit higher so it created a little bit of a zigzag pattern across the front of the sign. To cover up the holes on either side of the sign, I'm creating a nautical knot for each end. I took two lengths of jute cord and folded it in half. I faced one one of the loops of jute cord to the right and I tucked the ends of the second piece through that loop. Once I had the loop pulled almost the whole way through, then I picked up the ends of the first one and pulled it through the first loop. You don't have to go through this kind of complicated knot if you don't want to. You could just create a regular knot or just wrap jute cord around each end. After my knot was in place, then I fished the ends of the jute cord through each of the holes and I made sure that the knot was centered on the front of the sign. I added some hot glue to the back to secure it in place. I cut down a few pieces of felt to fit on the back of my hanger so that I could cover up some of those raw edges and they wouldn't scratch any surface that they would be laying on. Once I had a piece of the felt glued in the center, then I kind of marked with my fingers where that hook would have to come through so that I could poke it through that felt and then continue gluing it down. Now, because I ended up not being able to hang this over the door, if you would break off those hooks to start with, you wouldn't have to worry about this step. So my recommendation to you is you can still make this work. I still have a really pretty hanger that I can hang things on and I love it. But I would take that over the door part and I would bend it back and forth quite a few times. And this metal is thin enough that that hook will just break off so that you can use this as a flat hanging piece rather than an over the door piece. I hope that makes sense to you. I wasn't able to break my hooks off because I already had all of this felt and everything into place so I couldn't bend those hooks back and forth to break them off. So what I ended up doing in the end was flattening these hooks out as much as I could so that they could lay flat against the sign as well. You can see once I had that metal piece flattened out, I just added a bunch of hot glue over top of it and then another piece of felt so that it would be covered up. Now the problem is how do I hang this? So I cut a piece of the felt out on each end of the sign. I added in one of the tumbling tower blocks from the Dollar Tree and then on top of that I added a sawtooth hanger so that I could hang this up and still use it. I wanted to leave all this in for you to see because I don't want you to get discouraged when you're crafting. It's supposed to be fun. We all make mistakes, but there's usually a way that we can make it work and still make something beautiful. For hanging out in the craft room with me today let me know in the comments which of these projects was your favorite all right everyone i hope you have a great week and i'll talk to you in the next one